Today, in union with the whole church, East and West, we celebrate the feast of the Apostles St. Peter and St. Paul. The order for evening prayer begins on page 41 in your Book of Common Prayer, 2019. Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us, Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O gladsome light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light. We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for today's feast is Psalm 87, found on page 382 in your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord loves the foundation which he has laid upon the holy hills. The gates of Zion are dearer to him than all the dwellings of Jacob. Very excellent things are spoken of you, O city of God. I will consider Egypt and Babylon among those who know me. Behold, Philistia also and Tyre with Ethiopia. Each one was born in her. And of Zion it shall be reported that each one was born in her. And the Most High shall establish her. The Lord shall record it when he registers the people that each one was born there. The singers and all the dancers also shall say, All my fresh springs are in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the second epistle of Paul to Timothy. 
I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him throughout all generations. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our fathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's short homily is taken from a sermon by St. Augustine of Hippo. Augustine says, This day has been consecrated for us by the martyrdom of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul. It is not some obscure martyrs we are talking about. Their sound has gone out into all the earth and their words to the end of the world. These martyrs had seen what they proclaimed. They pursued justice by confessing the truth, by dying for the truth. 
the blessed Peter, the first of the apostles, the ardent lover of Christ, who was found worthy to hear, and I say to you that you are Peter. He himself, you see, had just said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ said to him, And I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Upon this rock I will build the faith you have just confessed. Upon your words, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I will build my church, because you are Peter. Peter comes from Petra, meaning a rock. Peter, rocky, from rock, not rock from rocky. Peter comes from the word for a rock in exactly the same way as the name Christian comes from Christ. Before his passion, the Lord Jesus, as you know, chose those disciples of whom he called apostles. Among these, it was only Peter who almost everywhere was given the privilege of representing the whole church. It was in the person of the whole church, which he alone represented, that he was privileged to hear, To you I will I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. After all, it is not just one man that received these keys, but the church in its unity. So this is the reason for Peter's acknowledged preeminence, that he stood for the church's universality and unity when he was told, To you I am entrusting what has in fact been entrusted to all. To show, to show you that it is the church which has received the keys of the kingdom of heaven, listen to what the Lord says in another place to all his apostles. Receive the Holy Spirit, and immediately afterwards, whose sins you forgive, they will be forgiven them. Whose sins you retain, they will be retained. Quite rightly, too, did the Lord, after his resurrection, entrust his sheep to Peter to be fed. It is not, you see, that he alone among the disciples was fit to feed the Lord's sheep. But when Christ speaks to one man, unity is being commended to us. And he first speaks to Peter, because Peter is the first among the apostles. Do not be sad, apostle. Answer once, answer again. Answer a third time. Let confession conquer three times with love, because self-assurance was conquered three times by fear. What you had bound three times must be loosed three times. Loose through love what you had bound through fear. And for all that, the Lord once and again and a third time entrusted his sheep to Peter. There was one day for the passion of two apostles. But these two also were as one. Although they suffered on different days, they were as one. Peter went first. Paul followed. We are celebrating a feast day consecrated for us by the blood of the apostles. Let us love their faith, their lives, their labors, their sufferings, their confession of faith, they're preaching. Amen. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace in your church and in the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of St. Peter and St. Paul and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you by their martyrdom, grant that your church, instructed by their teaching and example, and knit together in unity by your Spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, which is Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the source of all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite you now to offer your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And, we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, a blessed feast day to you all. Uh, I remembered during the service that I, this, for this service, I remembered to light the candles, but I forgot to change the frontal to red, the color of martyrs. <laughs> so I apologize for that, uh, but I don't think the Lord uh, minds. Uh, thanks again for joining me, and uh, I wish you all a very uh, happy and holy feast day. Ciao.